first would be the ability to admit that you effed up you know like you've made a mistake i guess a lot of developers has this type of ego especially when they're starting out even me i was like this where i can't admit that i've committed a mistake in my experience i see a lot of guys that just can't say oh i effed up and i was one of them before and it only led to hurting my ass instead of communicating that hey i effed up so can the team please handle this or can we please do this first or fix this first before we do anything else what i did instead was create this secret commits that i pushed in into my branch uh, you may understand this if you're already in the industry but what i did was secretly made changes to fix the mistakes that i've made but in turn only made it worse because the versioning of our app is now it's now all it was jumbled and then since it was jumbled up you cannot revert to the previous version because that previous version has the changes that i made the secret changes which in turn create created more bugs because it didn't went through the normal process of screening which code works and which code doesn't because it was secretly added in there anyway yeah so communicate your mistakes and this is one of the first thing that i added here because i think a lot of developers especially people who are starting out or you know junior developers are afraid to be criticized by their mistakes but in turn it just actually makes you a better developer if they create criticize you or they see your mistake and then and then once you communicate your mistake then the team may give you another suggestion or give you other ways to solve the problems without committing that mistake again so it in turn it makes you a better developer so i, I highly suggest you communicate your mistakes to to your team to your managers so that you learn not and they may teach you how to not do it again then the second one would be accountability accountability is that a soft skill or a characteristic i'm not sure but i'm just going to add it here since it's important also let's say you've committed the mistake you've already co uh, communicated your mistake then the next one would be is to be accountable about your mistake so everything you do will have consequences and since uh, software is such a fragile thing especially when it is not done right being accountable is will gain you not only respect but more experience it doesn't mean that because you've committed your mistake you've communicated your mistake now you're absolved of guilt no <laughs> accountability means being in the front lines when it comes to having that problem you know to solving that problem you are in the front lines you are in the trenches with your brothers with your comrades that suddenly that was suddenly communist <laughs> anyway yeah you should be accountable there are consequences to everything you do good ones and bad ones you should be accountable and when i was a lead developer every thing that my junior developers do would be my responsibility so i'm accountable to everything they do so every move they make i'm accountable so if one of my junior developers messed up then i would throw myself under the bus first before that guy before the junior developer if i could cushion the blow for the team i would do it and i guess that's being accountable and you know managers would be mad at the at the lead developer first before the junior developers but being accountable you shouldn't blame them instead lead developers should teach them not to make that mistake again and be more kind and not make them feel a lot stupid <laughs> when i was first starting out as a lead developer i i will admit i made someone feel stupid but i regretted that and i wish i would have done differently and you know created an environment where i could motivate and encourage developers to come forward and 
they are confident in me that I will be accountable with, with what they do and I'm accountable with checking all their code so that no mistakes were made. Anyway, yeah, third one, third soft skill would be to make things simple. <laughs> I, I was I was this before, so this is mostly based on my experience. And the thing is, a lot of developers, including me, waste a lot of time trying to explain technical things in to people who are not really tech savvy. So, which is not the way, especially if you're, yeah, talking to someone who is not tech savvy, which is the prime example of those people are managers and the marketing team. And if they ask you what you're doing, then you try to explain it in a very technical way, they would, you know, they wouldn't even understand it. And in turn, you're just wasting time. Time you should have used coding instead of explaining things in a very technical way. But you know, there are still people who would like to listen to the technical stuff even though they can't understand it and I've had managers who were like that before what I do is treat them like treat them like six years old when explaining this because you know like Einstein said if you can't explain it to a six-year-old then you you don't understand it so what I actually do is just explain it in a simple yet technical way i just throw in some technical jargons in there that are you know when it, it when it is appropriate and then i stroke their ego by saying oh you understand this oh that's nice of you you know like uh, i can't believe you got that so uh and then ask them a little bit if they could suggest some things then they would believe it or not <laughs> they would suggest things even though they're wrong i would just say oh that's good and but uh Unfortunately, we cannot do that because we've set this thing up this way. And so I can save time and they would feel and these managers would feel like they've accomplished something because I've stroked their ego. And, you know, I've <laughs> also compliment that they understand parts of the explanation. And yeah, I compliment them in a very sincere way. And I guess they let me go after that because they got their satisfaction. I did my job. We saved some time without going through the bushes. And yeah, so <laughs> let's move on. As for the fourth soft skill, that would be interpersonal skills. I guess this is the way. I, I guess soft skill is interpersonal interpersonal skills so i guess I, I i'm saying that the fourth skill would be creating rapport to other people so like connections with your teammate your managers you're know, having a good standing you're you're always on their good side most of the time so having to handle yourself with co-workers will take you a long way and you know not every workplace is perfect there are always people who is you know who are out there who's out to get you you know like they these people they would try to amplify and magnify even your smallest mistakes and you know, imperfections but there are also friendly people and there are more friendly people than those people so try to gather as much comrades as you can you know talk about their interests memorize their names and like the book said uh how to influence how to make friends and influence people there's this book and what it says is that the the sweetest word a person can hear would be their name you know so try using their name uh when you talk to them it shows that you care and and actually care about their interests when they talk to you have some small chats uh five minute small chat don't spend too much time because <laughs> if you have people who are supporting you who are your comrades then when crisis when there are crises that arise then at least you have people to support you you have people you can support and you have basically people who would shield you from threats from the managers it's like managers versus developers that's the way it is uh yeah that's the reality it's like developers versus managers anyway 
in terms of hostile co-workers, uh, just be humble. Never be hostile to anyone, even if they're being hostile to you. Because in terms of the team, there are managers, then there are developers, then there are lead developers, there are senior developers. There is always this one person who has a bird's eye view of everything that's happening. And they would know who's hostile to who, and they would know who's actually doing the job, then they're just finding the right timing to kick that one person out. So if you're the one being hostile to another person, then you could be targeted by that guy who has the bird's eye view of everything. So I suggest just be humble. Do not let them ego trip. Uh, you know, someday they would they would eat their words. They would eat their actions and just stay humble, do your job, and support as much people you can and so that they could support you as well in the future that's the way that's the way it works in terms i guess in <laughs> in a development team especially since a development team mostly consists of five people it's called a tribe and as a tribe you have to survive together whatever or how strong or does the typhoon or the storm is you guys should always stick together and if there's one hostile in your tribe, there's always a way to kick them out. And that would be the job of the managers who has the bird's eye view of your tribe. Anyway, yeah, the fifth one would be note taking. So taking notes in general. I'm sure a lot of people are not taking notes in, at their jobs, especially if you're a developer. When you're in a stand-up and you're or in a retro or in... A meeting where you're discussing future sprints uh, it's it's very important to take notes because what your your notes is a reflection of what you've understood and then the ticket that would be the that would be made for the task at hand would be the reflection of what they thought they let you understand does that make sense? So <laughs> the ticket would be the reflection of wh what the managers and the people who are assigning the task to developers understood and your notes would be the reflection of what you understood. So if you compare those two and there's discrepancies, you could actually just say that, hey, this is what I, under I understood and I think this would be better if we implement this task with what I understood. And, you know, that that would help anyone you know if especially if the team is very open to suggestions and so yeah i take notes and so especially when there are discrepancies oh this is what i understood so this is what i'm trying to do but then the ticket described it as this one so it's a bit different so which one's right is is your is the is the ticket right or is my notes right did you change anything after the meeting that i missed then you at least you could communicate those things and uh basically you could improve the task or you could probably say that hey yeah there are also times where i've taken notes and i've already done some of those things and and my notes i've already checked them but then those there are sometimes that the one assigning tickets are doing a lot of things multitasking and somehow duplicates those tickets uh, then at least i could communicate that hey this is already done then they would say oh okay so at least you have a record of your own then that would benefit all of you especially you and those are the five soft skills characteristics that I I could think of. And hopefully that would help you become a better developer in the future. Or if you're already a developer, yeah, I hope you could, this one, help you. If you have more, then yeah, go ahead, put them in the comment section. And yeah, I could learn from you. And hopefully you could learn from me as well. And if you like this video, just... Give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want, and that's it. Uh, see you on the next one.